My name is Mike Morris and we're Rooftel.com. I want to bring you a selection from our training videos. We have a three-day training format that we provide as part of our total package. And I just want to give you a glimpse that's going to maybe cause you to want to know a little bit more about what we do here. Primarily what we do is we bring you the ability to generate your own leads. It's the difference between giving a man a fish and teaching a man a fish. We're going to teach you to fish. So I want you to just take a look at this segment of uh, our training and judge for yourself whether or not you need to know more about what we do here and if it can benefit you. Enjoy. We don't need robots. You know, we're not trying to create talking heads here. You know, we're trying to create thinking, clever people who have great personalities, who have a, a functional message to deliver, a nice environment to work in, and when the end of the shift happens, they say to themselves, I did the best I could do and I achieved my goal. That's what we're trying to do here. But l let's um, kind of uh, look here at this uh, back end. Focus a little bit on the back end, all right? Now here's the front end. This is you. Leads, 10 leads, 20 hours, 10 leads, 0 0.50. Here's what happens with this. We're going to take these leads and we're going to put them through a process. We have to kind of put your work product, your, the front end, your leads, to the fire. We have to refine them. We have to purge out the bad stuff and just be left with the good stuff. Okay, here's how it works. You know, you're going to write a lead, say, for Thursday. Your supervisor or somebody who has been tasked with this assignment is going to contact these people on Wednesday. And they're going to say something like this. The reason I'm calling is one of our representatives, Stella, has scheduled an appointment for us to be at your home tomorrow to do a free evaluation of your roof for storm damage. And I'm just calling to make sure that we have the correct address. I have you located at blah, blah, blah. Okay? You know, they're like, okay, yep, yep, I remember Stella. Yep, we, we, we're waiting. We'll be here at 2.30. Okay? Good. Thing confirms. This doesn't happen to all of them. Some of them kick out. We call it a KO. It just kicks out. You call them, yeah, we had a chance to think about it, and, you know, the, it's really not that bad. You know, we don't want our insurance uh, to go up, and, uh, you know, we may be moving out of this place. You know, they all kind of excuses. You can't get in there for nothing, okay? But what we want to do, now, this is quota for the confirmer. Of course, it's predicated on you writing a stand-up lead so that the confirmer has something to work with. But they want to maintain a 70% confirmation rate. We want those bad leads to be purged out, okay? Because what the confirmer is going to do is hand those leads over to the sales department. The sales manager is going to issue those leads to individual sales representatives. They may get in their cars and drive like 35 miles, you know, to get to this place. They have faith in the system, too, just like you. They have faith that you're doing your job, that you're not throwing at them, and that the confirmer is doing their job and getting rid of the ones that have no likelihood of developing into what we're looking for. Okay, Somebody that signs a contingency letter saying that if the insurance company awards me the money that I'm entitled to to replace this roof, you get to replace it. That's how we make our money, all right? Now, here's the other phase of this process, okay? Rep goes out to the house, drives up, knocks on the door, nobody's home, <laughs> all right? Now, what he should do is he should call back to the office, inform the supervisor that these people aren't home, Try contacting them, try rescheduling it, and uh, for that day, if possible, you know, they may be just at the supermarket or something like that. That's why it's important for you folks to get a cell number, you know, an alternative daytime number, and um, so that we can contact these people uh, 
if this uh, situation develops, okay? But we're going to lose two. We want to lose two. So here, look, at, look what's happening here. Our sit ratio, some people call them sits. I, I've called them sits all my life. Uh, the sit ratio should be about 50% of the front end. See how this back end is working? Okay, now listen folks. Once this guy or gal representative crosses the threshold of a qualified person's home, we have done our job. We can do no more. But one thing that we do do that assists the representative when he's in the home is our pleasant nature, our coherent message, our succinctness, our personality, our voice. You know, it, it kind of sets a tone for the representative's visit. You got to remember that when you're dealing with these people for that brief five minutes. You want to kind of put an a impression on them, a good impression, because they're going to carry that impression into their relationship with our sales representatives, okay? So if you're some kind of dull, dry guy or gal that just stumbled into this opportunity and you're fortunate enough to have it a result in one of the representatives speaking to your client, the likelihood of him converting this into a situation if he does find damage is less than it would be if the inside salesperson had made a genuine impression on this individual. Just take my word for that, okay? Okay, now, I'm gonna, I, I put a double line here. <laughs> and the reason why, because it's like a barrier. It represents the end of, to which we can have any impact on this situation. You know, once we get the guy in, in, the, in the door, it's his business. But how this is going to play out and how we want it to play out is like this. Out of these five, two of these people are going to result in work product for the company. All right? We're going to put roofs on their house. So you can see how this continuum functions. This is the front end. That's you. All right? Here's the back. Okay? That's, the comp that's your supervisor. That's the salesperson. That's the company. All kind of stuff happens after this number, too. You know? But it all begins with you. Now, let's look at efficiency. We kind of looked at efficiency. You know, we said that the point five zero. you know, if you're working a 20 hour a week, you know, the 10 qualified leads are efficiency, okay? You know, what is efficiency? Not just for you, but for the whole company. You know, this department uh, is, has a purpose and a function, you know, so when is it fulfilling its function? All these numbers are industry standards. You know, that doesn't mean that they're etched in stone. Myself, personally, instead of having a 70% confirmation rate, I have about an 85% confirmation rate. It, instead of five of my uh, leads sitting, six or seven sit. Why? Because I got a higher confirmation rate, okay? So instead of getting two, maybe I get three. Maybe I get four. I've had three sales in one night. You know, I call it the hat trick, you know. But here's what it means to the company, okay? Now, a sale, average sale, this is also industry standard, correct me if I'm wrong, is about $8,000. All right, average sale is going to be $8,000. bucks. Some of them are going to be $5,600. Some of them are going to be $25,000. I've seen, I've seen $50,000 sales, okay? Because not only can the roof be damaged, you know, the windows can be damaged, the siding can be damaged, you know, they may have a little shit in the back that gets damaged. These things can really um, uh, price out, you know, but the average is about 8000 bucks. So here's Joe, Sally, uh, Beth, and Mark. There's four of you. So we have eight sales out of four people in, in a week, which if they're working 20 hours and getting 10 leads, and everything's working well. Here's why... This is so valuable, all right? Uh, you got eight 
times 8 is 64. All right? Out of these four people, we have generated $64,000 worth of work product for the company. Do you think the, the owner likes inside sales? Yeah. Do you think his wife likes inside sales? Yeah. Even his dog loves inside sales. And the reason why is because this number here is predictable. Okay? This is why this guy is using inside sales as an advertising medium rather than another medium. He could spend his money on, uh, on, on uh, TV commercials, or she could spend her money on radio ads. Uh, but guess what? They can't predict how many times the phone's going to ring. You know, They just keep their fingers crossed and hope that all the money that they gave this radio station is going to pay off. You know, they're on their knees at night because these people have really uh, charged them a lot of money. Okay, every business person wants a return on their investment. Inside sales is the only form of advertising where you can get a predictable return on your investment. See how that works? Do you like that? Do you like being part of that? I'm sure the owner will love it when your department is kicking out each individual 10 leads every week because if the average sale is 8,000 bucks he's looking at uh, $64,000 a week hey man this this four weeks in a month 4 8 12 16 uh, 6 24 hey that that almost looks like $256,000 in a month all right they love you